is risen. risen Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, whose praise is from those whom you have called from darkness to faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, uplift our hearts to the holiness of your presence, that with pure hearts we may adore your name and worship you with joy on our lips. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Redeemer and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit forevermore. Amen. We sing our first hymn, number 202. Thank mm-hmm.
5 in the Lutheran hymnal. Please rise. <laughs> And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given thy only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and has given his only Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To them that believe on his name, he gives power to become the sons of God, and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. <laughs> when I awake, I am still with you. Hallelujah. You have laid your own hand upon me. Hallelujah. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You have known my down sitting and my uprising. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Father.
first reading this morning comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord, and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellence, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath to consume them like stubble. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. They blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Here ends our first reading of the day. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Hallelujah. Our New Testament reading of the day comes from John's Gospel account, chapter 20. Verses 1 to 18. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. And we do not know where they had laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but float, or folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, 
that he had spoken these things to her. Here ends our New Testament reading. <laughs> Confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I would ask the children to come forward.
and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On this blessed Easter morning, let us consider the words of Paul written in his second letter to Timothy, chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Consider what I say, and may the Lord God give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. So far, our text. And it is in the name of that risen Savior that we are gathered here this morning, your fellow redeemed. When the women arrived there at that tomb early that first Easter morning, the angels greeted them with words that seemingly seemed unbelievable. He has risen. And then one of the angels told them that this miracle shouldn't seem unbelievable at all, shouldn't be of any surprise. And why is that? Remember what he told you. That word, remember, remember, remember. How many times did Jesus say that to his followers during his time here on earth and during his earthly ministry? He said it enough times, but it may not have seemed that way to those who followed him. It may not seem like enough times for us even, who need that constant validation and reminder as well. Paul, whose words we have before us this morning, also told young Timothy, remember. Now these were some of the last words that Paul ever wrote. He knew that his work here on earth was fast coming to a close and that he was nearing heaven. He was nearing a martyr's death at the hands of the Romans. What goes through a person's mind when they're about to die? Do they think about those happy memories from their childhood days? Do they sit there and think about all the accomplishments that they have made? either in their personal life or professional life. Maybe they think about simple things like family and friends. That's not what was on Paul's mind. This is what was on Paul's mind. Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. In contrast to what much of the world thinks, much of the Christian faith is built on that. Remember. Remembering what God has done for us. The main message that God has for us is not to go and do, which would be work and works righteousness, but rather to see and believe, to hear what the Holy Spirit has written about, what Jesus has accomplished and what Jesus will accomplish. This is what we remember this Easter morning. The great things that our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. So that through faith in him we have the forgiveness of sins and we have eternal life. No questions. We really can't do anything else, can we? What else can we do this morning but go to that empty tomb and gaze inside? as the two disciples did, or as Mary did, and ponder with amazement what this means for us. Ponder with amazement what we find in there, which is absolutely nothing. There is nothing that we can do. There's nothing else we can do, and there's nothing else we need to do. Because God in his rich grace has done everything for us. He is the one who defeated sin, death, and hell. He rose in victory, that guarantee for all people that sin is paid for, that guarantee that by his power he will also raise from death all who believe in him. It is he who Paul says in 1 Corinthians who gives us the victory over death through our Lord, Jesus Christ. How could we possibly forget these things? Well, Jesus 
certainly hasn't changed over the years. He's eternal. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the nature of his disciples hasn't exactly changed much either. I mean, we still have our fears. We have our doubts. We're sometimes slow to believe those things which were recorded for our benefit. But that's all the more reason to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying here through the Apostle Paul. Remember Jesus Christ. Remember that name. A person's name represents everything that they are, everything they've done, everything they stand for. And especially in that point in history, the Hebrews really put an emphasis on the definition of these names. And what do we have here? We have a name that God himself gave to his son, the name that means Savior, the name that means Jehovah saves. Because Jesus came to this earth on a mission. He came to do battle with the forces of hell. Throughout his earthly ministry, he undid everything that Satan had tried to do. Jesus healed the sick. He drove out demons. He raised the dead. And as we saw three days ago, this escalating battle had reached its head on Good Friday in that last decisive hour. Remember the agony of the cross as God and Satan went head to head for something very particular. And that particular thing was the possession of your souls. It was a struggle to the death. And it did end in that. Because at the end of the day, Jesus Christ our Lord <coughs> lay dead within that tomb. But it's here this morning that we see at last not a tomb with a rock in front of it, with guards in front of it, but we see the stone moved away, that heavy stone which is impossible to move. And we see those claws lying in there but no body. We see that this was not the end. This was the beginning. Christ has risen. He is alive, and it is death that has died. Remember that Jesus is the Christ. Now, the Christ is one of those things that we take as a name and use it as a name oftentimes, but Christ is actually a title. And it means the anointed one. This is the one whom God handpicked and anointed to be our substitute, our champion. He is the Messiah. All the prophecies of Scripture are fulfilled in him. There is no mistake there. This is the one, the only one, who has God's own approval. Jesus is the Christ. And that does not just mean that he's the one that God appointed to suffer and die, but it also means that he's the one whom God appointed to rise to life once more and to live forever and ever. Jesus rose to ascend to the right hand of God where he rules all things in heaven and on earth. And if he has power to rule all things, he has the power to save those who believe in him who put their trust in him. Remember Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead. If there's one word that consistently causes doubt, uncertainty, and fear more than any other word in our language, it has to be that word, death. We know that it's a part of life. We know that it's coming. We know that it's coming to our friends, to our family, that it's even coming to each one of us. Fear is often caused by the unknown, so it's strange. Because death is very well known, but it still fills us with fear. That fear of death comes from the knowledge of sin, which we learn about in the Bible. Deep down, we know that there is a God, and from the Word, we know that he is holy, good, and just. But deep down, we also know that we have failed to do what God requires us to do, to 
live a holy and sinless life dedicated to him, to live in perfect love for him and our neighbor. And scripture isn't shy about telling us what the inevitability is of that transgression. We die because we have sinned. You want to know where that fear stems from? That's where. We were created to live in harmony with God, but our sins bring God's wrath and judgment instead. Our sins separate us from God and his love, from peace and joy. They bring upon us God's judgment. So what are we going to do? What can we do? Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead. Out of the tomb has come the one who paid for all your sins. He carried them to the cross, and he left them in the tomb. Your sins are gone. They are buried. Out of that tomb came our holy, innocent Lord Jesus Christ. On the cross, he was covered with our sins, and he suffered death, but now he is alive, and that is the proof that God has accepted that living sacrifice for us. <coughs> Jesus' resurrection is the foundation of our faith. That's what we're celebrating here today. That is what we celebrate every day, because that's where we get life. His, or his resurrection gives us certainty about our forgiveness and all the promises God has made. Just look at what God has done for each of you in your lives. You can trust him with your life, with your soul. And seeing Jesus Christ raised from the dead creates an unshakable faith and hope that is ours no matter what may happen in our earthly lives. Remember what Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, though he may die. That is your faith, your hope, and your joy too. And you can always have that faith, hope, and joy, even in the darkest of days that face you on this earth, by remembering that simple message. That simple truth that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And finally, remember also that he is descended from David. An odd thing to think about here this morning. That's usually a Christmas thing that we go into. But Jesus Christ comes from the line of a king. He himself is a king. In fact, he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. He commands and rules all things by his powerful and almighty word. And this king with all power protects you. In this same letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, he also had this to say. That the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. But there's actually something a little bit more about why we celebrate the fact that he is a descendant of David. Because David was a king, yes, but David was also a man. So is our Lord Jesus Christ. And it wasn't just the Son of God who came out of that tomb on Easter morning. It was also a man, just like the rest of us. It was a human being who rose from the dead. And by his resurrection, we are given a glimpse of that glory that will one day be ours when Christ calls us too out of the grave to an everlasting glory. We won't look as we do now. We won't have these slowly aging bodies that reveal our weaknesses, reveal our decline. We won't feel as we do now with the hurt, the pain, the handicaps, the illnesses, the diseases, or death. We won't ache as we do now from shattered dreams or disappointments, from failures or shortcomings or 
sadness and grief. Rather, we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Jesus Christ, who by his resurrection shows he has power over death, will also raise all people from death and glorify the bodies of those who trust in him. We will be like him, have that image of God once more, and we can confess, as Job did because of it, that after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Paul says, finally, here in our text this morning, that this is my gospel. <coughs> and what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news. Paul's not just claiming it for himself. It's not just Paul's gospel. It's not just my gospel. It's not just your gospel as if this were something that was of a private interpretation or opinion. No, this is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. It is God's own message of peace and hope to the world. He is the one who spoke these things and because God himself has said it, it is true. He spoke these things to Paul. He, in his grace, has spoken them to each one of you. Your faith in him is secure and solid for this gospel, this good news, is not something that's going to shift away like the sand, but it is a solid rock and foundation on which your life is built so remember this gospel always, for by it you are saved. Remember always what God has done for you. Yes, remember Jesus Christ, and remember his resurrection. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Precious Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you that by your suffering on the cross, you endured the very agony of hell for us, and that by your death you have reconciled us to God. 
And on this day, we especially thank and praise you for your resurrection from the dead. For it proves that you are God's Son and seals your sacrifice as the full payment of our sins. O Jesus, may we never cease to praise you with our hearts and lips for all that you have so graciously done for our salvation. Ever living Lord, as you were raised up and glorified in your body, raise us up by the Spirit from spiritual deadness to trust you with all our hearts and to serve you in godliness all our days. Fill our hearts with joy as we look with longing to the day of your glorious reappearing when you will raise all the dead from their graves. Comfort us with the knowledge that on that day our vile bodies shall arise in the likeness of your own glorious resurrection body. O Savior, we need you every moment of every day. Be with us and shower upon us your promised grace and blessings. As our exalted prophet instruct and encourage our hearts with the gospel of forgiveness and help us grow in our faith and knowledge of salvation. As our exalted high priest, hear us when we pray in your name and intercede at our Father's throne in our behalf. As our exalted king, watch over us day by day, protecting us from all danger, guarding and keeping us from every evil. Preserve us to your heavenly kingdom by granting us daily repentance and renewal of faith. O Jesus, our beloved friend, whose continual presence has been promised us, be at our side in all of our troubles. Grant us strength to bear them and wisdom to overcome them. Grant us grace to endure every sorrow that comes our way and courage to cope with every disappointment. You are the help of the helpless who lifts up those who are fallen. Therefore, comfort and relieve us according to our individual needs. As we travel the hard road of suffering and sorrow, may we learn to love you more and eagerly await the treasures that you have reserved for us. All this we ask to the glory of your name, O triumphant Christ, who lives and reigns forever. And it's in your name also that we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Maybe seated. We sing our next hymn, number two ten. <coughs>
holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. That by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and never hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forevermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
birthday to you. Lord bless you.